Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today's scenario was sent in by Robert Posh, and it has been a while since he sent his video on August 24th. So, know that if you, if you sent in your scenario uh, a longer time ago, I have not forgotten it. It's just been a uh, flood of scenarios. I'm currently up to 790 in my inbox. The uh, flow has slowed down a bit. So if you have sent in your scenario a couple of weeks ago, don't fret because it might still come up at some point. Now, as the title implies, we are going to hold California hostage. Here's the story. You are the Japanese admiral chosen to win the war by holding California hostage until the US sues for peace. By July 1945, the war is basically lost for Japan. Japan has kept their two largest and most destructive battleships in reserve with a flotilla of six destroyers and ten transports. These are filled with fuel and ammunition specifically for this mission. You have changed your naval codes upon learning that the US has been reading them the entire war. You have also learned of the massive US Navy buildup of resources for a potential invasion of the home islands. Your mission is to sail to the far south southern Pacific route, undetected, directly to the US coast and bombard and hold San Diego Naval Base hostage. You will only face a nominal force of the United States, as they only have a few light cruisers, destroyers and a couple of unmodernized battleships which they held in reserve. Once you defeat this fleet of ships, the west coast of the US is yours to terrorize. Now, I have changed the scenario a little bit, because it originally called for 1920s light cruisers, destroyers and battleships, especially from the US side, and they were only going to get um, a couple of those. They were only going to get 6, 6 and 3, but with that, against two super battleships from, the US, from uh, Japan, I don't think it's particularly fair. But if I give them 1930s tech, well, it's going to be a whole lot more tricky. There is an important rule here. You must sink the entire US fleet to completely command the Southern California waters and San Diego naval base. You cannot lose more than two transports. Otherwise, you won't have enough fuel and ammunition to hold the West Coast hostage. Now, this is particularly important because the transports are usually pretty damn vulnerable. They're... Um, definitely not my favorite ship class to have in the game because you can't control them. It's the AI that controls them and you cannot really tell the AI what to do with those ships or where to go. They just generally disengage as quickly as they can, which in the case of a transport is about 20 knots um, at best, but usually it's more in the range of 12 knots. So they're not very quick to evacuate. Now at 15,000 meters, this means that the battleships will be in range of the transports, most likely. And the light cruisers are going to be in range soon. So it's going to be a race against time to sink the battleships, the light cruisers and the destroyers before I either get shot at my uh, transports or before they torp me completely. So let's get to designing a large Japanese battleship. Now it is a US super battle, oh, sorry, a Japanese super battleship. I'm actually curious to see what the AI would come up with. I might just run with an AI built ship today. Four weight offsets only 0.5%. That's actually really good for the AI standards. Uh, I don't like Krupp 3 armor though. And I really would appreciate many slash maximum bulkheads. Double hull bottom, anti torp 4, reinforced bulkheads, anti flood, light shells of 17 inch caliber okay do you also come with torpedoes or are those just for show uh no you don't come with torpedoes you do get a hell of a lot two inch <clears throat> look at all that look at all that that is well it looks fancy but it probably won't do much because they can only fire out to a range of 6.8 which means that if a destroyer gets to within this range, I'm going to have bigger issues to worry about because I'll be dodging. I'll be moving out of the way. Also, a coincidence rangefinder? No thanks. Um, if we go for heavy shells, it's going to up the range a bit to 7.6. Two powder explosives or two powder propellant. Uh, this gives you a bit less gun range. There was one that gave you a bit more gun range, I think. Yeah, white powder. White powder puts the 3-inch guns at 8.2, and the 2-inch guns... Oh, sorry, those are the 2-inch... No, hold on. 
here. The hell? Oh, I've mistaken it. These are three inch guns. They're all three inch guns. The two inch guns limited to 6.2. The three inch guns limited to 8.2. And then we get the four inch guns for 10.3. A couple of eight inch guns for 16.5. And eight 17 inch guns for 33.7 kilometers. Right. The reload is dreadful. The reload on these things is 72 seconds. If I would want to bring this up, I'd have to say 5,000 tons somewhere. Now, they did bring Auxiliary 4. Um, this is not, unfortunately, a place where I can save a lot. Actually, for this scenario, I'm going to stick to very long range. Simply because we're going to go all the way to the west coast of the US. And I imagine that is quite a long way from Japan. Shaft. No, shaft's not going to help you much either. Geared steam turbines 2. Okay, oil, balanced boilers... Where am I going to save weight? Fifty two point two. That's acceptable. I guess I'm going to have to reduce belt armor. I don't really like doing it, but at this point, I don't really have too many other parts that I can still save some weight on. Uh, belt extended. A bit less deck armor. We go for 8-inch deck armor and then, let's say, 7-inch belt extended. Yeah, there we go. All right, so 14-inch belt, 7 extended, 8 deck, 5 deck extended, 18.3 on the conning tower, 24.8 on the turrets. All right, uh, the Asahi. Let's go. There is a very good possibility that I'm going to get torpedoed very soon by the American ships. Potentially the light cruisers and most probably the destroyers because they're... Oh, hello. Um, there are a lot of them. Let's see. You look like a destroyer to me. That's two quadruple torpedo tubes, so eight tubes per destroyer times six. But they're all lined up coming to me. That's good. All right, we got the Shimani and the Asahi. The transports are behind the battleships. This is good. This means that I can sort of shield the transports using the battleships. Now, it's not an ideal solution, because the battleships will then start taking torpedo hits, but it's better than having one torpedo hit immediately wipe out a transport. As for my destroyers, um, these guys come with... Ooh, a lot of torpedoes. That's 15 torpedo launchers per ship, times six. That's good. That's really good. And they range. They range 12 9. So the lead destroyer is in range. And then those three American battleships are going to come into range very soon. <clears throat> okay, good. I want you to go into the enemy fleet. And with the, des the uh, other destroyers. You know what? We're going to join that destroyer group. <clears throat> We're just going to make it one larger destroyer group. So we got Kamikaze, Okinama, and Tsuta. These are going to push in and then turn starboard and torpedo. So a bit more like that. And then Kaba, Sane, and Suzuki. How do I want to approach this? I don't want to have you guys torp yet. So you continue that way. All right. <clears throat> It's going to be pretty damn soon that we're going to find that the 4-inch guns are in range. And then a little sooner or a little later, the 8.2s are in range. Main battery set to kill off the battleships. We're already re taking return fire from, I think, potentially secondaries. And the DDs are on the receiving end of that. Now, we've already inflicted a decent hit here on the one of the battleships. This could be a very one-sided fight. It could be... Well, it could be risky. It really depends on what the AI builds. The ship seems to be moving sideways. Is it just turning? No, it seems to be better now. 
Now the reload on these things is pretty bad. But I also want to use this video as a test for the new uh, 0.76 version of the game. Because according to that, the smaller caliber guns are now more effective when fighting destroyers. So I'm hoping to see that point in action. 4-inch guns are in range. Yeah, okay, this is something else that apparently was already in version uh, 7.5 that I've been running for a while. What the Shimane is doing is fighting three different ships at the same time. The main 17-inch are going for the battleship. The 8-inch, these I believe are trained on the cruiser. And then the 4-inch are trained on the destroyer. Uh, the destroyer, by the way, which took a hell of a lot of damage as it gets hit by one of those 8-inch shells. They did change in 0.76 how much damage the uh, smaller caliber guns do. Especially against destroyers. So they should be more effective against DDs at this point. Alright, Suta. I want you to start turning. You are now well and true inside a range. Uh, let's see, who's the lead? Suta is lead. Alright, you're going to turp that one. You're going to turp that one. Actually, no, no, no. I need you to turp this one. Okinami is the second one. Kamikaze is the stern one. Just go in for an aggressive torpedo. Oh, crap. If there's a ship left to torpedo with. That was pretty painful. And there's more. Suta, many bulkheads. That might save her. I really hope so. Another DD is being subjected to the treatment from the 4-inch guns. This battleship appears to be flooding. Have any of my transports been hit yet? No, they're ignoring them as of right now. That's good. Another fire. I think that these battleships are... Well, I mean, they're pretty old. But they're also pretty bad at substan or standing up to 17-inch guns. Okay, Okanami has torped. Tsuta is trying to fall back behind the Kamikaze. Kamikaze also torpedoed. Uh, Okanami is now fleet lead. Or task force lead. You're going to turn away. Oof. Okanami also took a big hit. From what? From the 6-inch gun. Or a 6-inch gun. So that's not a destroyer. That's something else. Jesus, that was fast. 8-inch gun. Almost a thousand points of damage. These things have really been buffed. Or it's just confirmation bias. But holy shit, those DDs go down fast. The 8-inch guns have done more damage than the 17-inch guns. Because once one of those 8-inch guns hits the DD, and look at that, they have a 7% chance to hit on an 8-inch gun? That's really good. Now I also want to have a look at... Sh oh, hold, hold on, why are we turning? I want to have a look at all those 3-inch guns as they go off. It's not just one big broadside, it's like a continuous wall of shells that's coming the way of the uh, destroyers at this point. Yeah, it's not a consistent wall of shells, but it is definitely slowly pecking away at the ships. Hold on, is that a torpedo? That is a torpedo. Where there's one, there's usually more. Uh, Kabat, it's a Prito, this guy. Where the DD is here. Sane, that one. Suzuki, that one. Torpedo when ready. I'm afraid this is going to be a really one sided fight. I'll probably have to rerun the scenario with better tech for the US. And potentially a newly generated random ship. Torpedoes away from Kaba and Sane. And the Okinami is uh, gone. Heavy flooding? What caused that? 7-inch shell. 
Look at that. That must have been a light cruiser. Uh, the torpedoes from, I think, the first wave are still moving towards the ships. One, two. Because those are definitely not the new waves. That's this one, that one, and that one. I'm hoping that this battleship's going to get hit because they don't really seem to have a lot of maneuvering capability. They're relatively small ships. 43,000 tons, standard bulkheads, and only 14-inch guns. Versus these behemoths of 111,000 tons with 17-inch guns. But then again, they only had, let's say, battleship spare. These are not main ships. There goes the Gatling. This is going way too quick. There was an 8-inch shell for 2,249 damage. There goes Kaba. The DDs are dropping like flies today. What is going on? I'm going to have to get my head around the impact of this new uh, change. Uh-oh. Whoa. I, we're already taking down these guys? That was a torpedo hit for 2,000 damage. Okay. That's fair. Oregon also got torpedoed. This is what I was hoping, that I would sort of get unintended victims. Looks like the Oregon might take one more torpedo. Well, they are trying to evade with two damaged engines. It's not going to go very well. South Dakota and Maryland are also turning away. But they also have another torpedo wave coming in. Oregon's battle control part or damage control parties are probably working hard to contain the flooding. There goes the Sene? What the hell? I thought you were at a respectable distance. Suzuki's at a range of six. Eight, one eight inch shell. Boom, dead. Maybe they kind of overbuffed the capabilities against destroyers. Because the amount of damage that I'm seeing against the destroyers is fairly dramatic. Oregon should be dead. So they cannot contain their flooding. Another torpedo wave comes in. It's going to strike the row. One shot, one kill. Although this one gets hit by three. And a few bulkers. <laughs> That was fast. A few bulkheads, ship immediately floods. Maryland's about to eat three on her stern. Another one. Yep, near the bow. Oregon takes flooding and fires. She still has two compartments which are uh, filling up with water. Same for the South Dakota and the Maryland. There goes Oregon. South Dakota is lumbering into the wave, yet another torpedo. Suzuki sinks due to heavy flooding? Ah, 7-inch shells. You really have to be a lot more careful with the DDs. These things are so fragile now. Also, did we get torped? Mm, no. Asahi, maybe? Yeah, we got hit, but it only did 53 damage because we have a very good torpedo blister on these ships. Now, let's slow you guys down. Building even more accuracy. Looks like we're using very large caliber guns against light cruisers now. Not that we're going to need it, because the Quincy already has enough shit going on. I'm just going to wrap this thing up and do the scenario in reverse. There goes Quincy. See, I was worried something like this would happen, where the AIs just build ships which are very difficult for them to work with. And by that, I mean they're just... They're just not strong enough. Although, some other times the AI just shafts you by going full out 
90 to 110,000 ton battleship. And that makes it very difficult to survive a scenario. We're using 4 inch guns. Hold on. Let's put the 4 inch guns on the Marcus. The 4, the 3 and the 8. What the fuck? Look at that. I switch the guns to the Marcus. She immediately gets hit. 4 inch, 4 inch, 4 inch, 4 inch, 3 inch, dead. That was really fast. Now, sure enough, I was doing it at a 5 times speed. But still. That was ridiculously quick. Let's see how much damage these things can do against the Sun 1. And meanwhile, I want to know how much damage these things did. The 17 inch guns did 2337. These guys did about half. Or more than half, actually, at 1400. But the Asahi... It's even worse. The 8-inch guns did twice the amount of damage that the main battery did. Damn. Now we're just mauling a light cruiser using 8-inch guns only. Not like these things have a lot of those. I mean, it's 1, 2, 3. That's it. There's one on the port side, but I, of course, cannot bring that one to bear. So it is just... Six barrels of 8-inch gun. That's it. Now the Sun 1 is playing a very dangerous game, being here at six clicks out, or less. So they're getting what they deserve, but it's fast. I'm still expecting the Maryland to be sunk pretty soon, and South Dakota soon after. Let's just push in aggressively. The four inch guns have done 360 points of damage and the two inch, no, three inch guns 125. This is so one-sided. But it is a good test to see just how lethal those secondary guns can be. Especially after the update, I mean. Sun 1, minimum bulkheads, still flooding, but sort of coming back up. Come on, let's wrap this up. There goes the battleship Maryland. They have already manually selected the South Dakota as the next target for their 18 inch, sorry, 17 inch guns. And now we're taking on several ships at the same time, it seems. With the secondaries. Ooh, the Des Moines is coming in really close. South Dakota sinks. I'm not too sure what the plan is from the Des Moines, because they don't really have any kind of torpedo tubes or other solutions that they can use to quickly sink the Shimane. Set secondaries to Des Moines. <clears throat> 8 inch have 80% chance to hit. Look at that guy. Look at this. 4 inch, 3.5. 4 inch, ammo detonation, 734. 4.5, 3, 4, 4. These things fire every 5 seconds, but I just have so many of them. There goes Des Moines. Next buffalo. These ships are scary. I thought that the three inch gun Whoa, okay. I thought that the three inch guns wouldn't be that effective. But they are. Normally I don't go let's say smaller than five inch guns because they're usually pretty well. You can generally safely ignore those guns because they're not a, that effective. But this patch changed a lot. And there goes Buffalo. So that's the scenario done from the Japanese side. Now let's do it in reverse. Now let's take the US and see if I can pull off the same sort of result. So I'm going to get 1930s. We're going to have the Japanese Empire over there with the 1940s. Two battleships, six DDs, ten transports. 
I have six light cruisers, three battleships, and no transports. All right, I'm going to go with a random design again. And um, seeing as my mission is to actually sink two of their transports, because if I lose two transports, I won't have enough fuel or ammunition to hold the West Coast hostage, as it says in the scenario. Um, if I can sink two transports, I win. But of course, the AI didn't quite go for that strategy. See, the US could have picked a super battleship. They just didn't. They went with the Dreadnought 3 or 4, I think. Let's go with the modern battleship 2. No, 1. Because they are supposed to be reserve battleships. Except that somebody hasn't told the auto designer that, and they have decided to give us 18 inch guns on the bow. And a couple of three, no, two inch guns on the, the sides, secondaries. This is a really weird build. It's like it's not finished, like it just needs a third, a third turret, but it's just not there. These things are 4,000 tons. Electrical turrets, semi-auto loaders, coincidence rangefinder 3, yeah right. Gen 1 radar, pretty high amount of armor. Well, it has a massive 4 weight offset, but I went with the AI designs previously, so I'll just do it again. Here we go. I really hope that the AI is going to give me some actual workable ships and not minimum bulkheads all over the place. I didn't even check. F oh, few bulkheads on the main bridge. <sighs> Good luck with that. Michigan. Um, Bainbridge, Michigan, South Dakota. And we got the Tuscaloose, oh, sorry, Tuscaloose, standard bulkheads, six inch guns. I imagine these things can be really potent against the DDs. And my destroyers. 14 kilometer range, 20, no, 19 inch torpedoes, speed 37.5, many bulkheads. Okay. Now these, oh, these are the transports. <laughs> okay. Um, six inch, not in range. Hmm. What sort of ships did they go with? Really? I was going in with super battleships, and they're going in with some sort of boosted dreadnought. Hmm. Hopefully by hitting reset, they'll also regenerate their ships. So they'll come up with a different design for the American battleships. Because I have different ships now. The light cruisers Atlanta, Pasadena, Albany, and Vincennes do have torpedoes this time around. Well, it sure as hell has a lot more barrels. Still a boosted dreadnought because it still has casemates. Well, Japan, that's on you then. Uh, the plan. Have the DDs engage. Have the light cruisers engage. Have the rest of the DDs push... Whoa, not into the Vincennes, but into the targets. Uh, and I want the other group to turn that way. Go. Now, I have seen what these things can do with secondaries. And it is frightening. Are those five-inch singles? Interesting. Yep, one, two, ooh. 11 inch shells hitting one of my battleships. Wait, 11 inch? That's what you went with? That's weird. I was expecting something a lot more impressive from the Japanese than 11 inch guns. Because if I return fire with an 18 inch gun against a dreadnought, yeah, exactly. That happens. I will inflict a lot of damage, but these things can't. Okay, I'll hit restart one more time to see if I can actually get a big battleship to fight. If it doesn't work out this time around, then it's on them. 
That's more like it. Just judging by the size of it, that is more like it. There we go. <clears throat> Secondaries all around. Triple dual barrel turrets. So three dual barrels on the bow, one on the stern. Now this is what you call an escort. <laughs> If you look over to your starboard side and you see one massive Japanese battleship here. Alright. They're heading away. At an angle. I have to... Smoke... The fuck am I looking at? What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I'm sure that's supposed to be attached to some ship. As a smoke screen funnel. I don't know. Okay, we got a couple of smoke monsters heading into the formation of the U.S. Um, Japanese. We're already doing some damage against their transports. Easy pickings for the light cruisers, in fact. Light cruisers Chattanooga, Roanoke, Oakland, Detroit, Honolulu, and for some reason there is one single, Trenton. Rejoin the group. We have six-inch guns on the light cruisers. And torpedo tubes... That's 8 per side to a range of 9.9. .9. I don't want to torpedo the transports. That's a waste of good torpedoes. What about their DDs? What can we see from visual? Three torps in the bow, four amidships. The whole ship's awash. That's it. Seven torpedo tubes. Alright. Let's see if I can still do effective damage with the secondaries. Uh, especially with the 6 and the 5 inch on these things. Although they do... No, they don't carry a lot of them. Oh well. I'll probably be seriously missing my 8 inch guns at this point. <clears throat> now I know that I've technically won the scenario if I sunk two transports, but... It's a bit cheesy if I actually sink two transports and call it a day. One of the battleships is already taking some serious damage, but then again, we're throwing 18-inch ammunition their way. <coughs> it's gonna happen. DDs, don't be stupid. That's one transport sunk. DDs, hard starboard, all of you. Before you flood out. Oh, all of you, you mean both of you. Okay. Um, you guys over there. Holy shit, what? 18 inch shell. Ammo detonation. Four and a half thousand points of damage. No, actually. The ammo detonation didn't do that much. It was just the flat out shell damage that did it. Bow deck extended over pen for four and a half thousand damage. Oh, you're supposed to be a destroyer. Well, were. So that's what I hit. Because I couldn't imagine hitting a battleship for that much damage. These do look nice, sailing information. Alright, I think that this might, once again, be pretty one-sided. Not so much because this time around they went with poor ships, or poor ship design. But it's just that the American ships got some serious firepower. Oh, there goes the downs. You a transport? No, you're not a transport. You're a destroyer. Light cruisers, target the transport. Or, sorry, target the destroyer. I'm also trying to get the transport. No, the... Why do we keep calling them transports? The light cruisers rushed into a position where they can torpedo the battleships. Identification is forthcoming. I don't think that these guys have few bulkheads or minimum. Because they've been hit pretty bad, but they haven't flooded that much. Torpedo in the water. Sorry, is that uh, normal? Um, where do I need to maneuver to avoid these torps? Starboard? Starboard. But my battleships... few bulkheads. This could cost me a battleship. It's not the only torpedoes that are... Oh, actually, these are outbound. 
the hell? Who sent those? Oh, the DD. Right. The DD. Okay. Six inch shell, 490 damage. Eight inch shell hits me, 878 damage. I think destroyers effectively got nerfed hard with this patch. There goes a transport after it gets hit by a torpedo. The rest of the transports seem to be alright, as long as they don't maneuver too stupidly. But this torpedo could be severely painful for this transport. No, it's slowing down. They're fine. Izzard's flooding. I think the Izzard's not going to survive this one. Light cruisers. Turning. Torpedoes away against the battleships. We're still dealing damage to a destroyer here, the Akazuki. 12 damage. 490 damage. I think the light cruiser... Ooh. <laughs> oh, shit. The light cruisers were uh, deserving a buff. There goes another one. The Roanoke is about to go... Is going down. Uh, the light cruisers deserved a buff because I didn't find them to be that effective. Six-inch guns, seven-inch guns. They were generally a bit of a pushover. Ow. Wizard sinks. But with these firepower changes, these ships are definitely a lot more powerful. All right, we got the key and the Mikaho. Maximum bulkheads, yeah, see? Seriously, though, what was that? 16-inch shell. Bow belt penetration. 2136 damage. Boom, you're dead. South Dakota, maintain course. Uh, put your secondaries on the transport. Looks like we might get one torpedo hit on the key. Anti-Torpedo, three. Don't worry, it's already dead. Yeah, a bit of flooding. It's not going to be that special, though. The rest of the light cruiser is now going to cut through the rest of the formation. My, oh, crap, my DDs are in trouble. Oh, crap. Dickerson, come on. Don't be stupid. No. Come on, turn, you idiot. I told you to turn to starboard, not turn to port. If you turned to starboard immediately, we would have been able to avoid these things. Yeah, you got exactly what you deserved. South Dakota sinks to structural damage. Yep, that was a flash fire. Ships seem to be going down very fast recently. The key has also suffered immense amounts of damage all of a sudden. Torpedo 151, Torpedo 149, 6-inch shell. What got this guy so good? Normally the 3-inch guns, the 4-inch, the 5, the 6, they don't do that much because they generally don't hit. Now they do. And boy, do they do a lot of damage, because the damage log is filling up very quick. Doesn't look like the Japanese are going to get away with their uh, hostage-taking of the US, though. California and San Diego Naval Base should be fine. Alright, let's put the secondaries on the uh, Okuhotaka. That's the secondaries from the Belknap in the Florida. These are the 5 inch and the 6 inch, right? No, just the 5, because the 6 can't even fire yet. Oh, I appear to have only one turret operation. Belknap. Florida's fine. Five inch shells, 124, 102. 90, 148. I'm also expecting the smaller caliber guns to start working soon. 2 inch. Oh, they're not in range. Okay. A 
Looks like this transport's gonna go down to flooding. Light cruisers. Let's work over another transport. Or a DD. Torpedoes away. I might get torpedoed myself here. There goes the transport. No, they're not torpedoing me. Alright. Your loss. Key is moving away. Mikaho turning to starboard. Okay. We still have a couple of light cruisers left, but they're in a bit of disarray. Not sure what their formation is supposed to be. They appear to be going all over the place. Hydro 3. They might have detected the tropes by now, because these are pretty damn visible. Now, Florida has some issues. I mean, doesn't it always? Um, no, the ship seems to have damaged engines and flooding. I'm opening up the broad side of the ship too much. She does have a decent belt armor. But these are still 16-inch guns and they need to be respected. So let's turn in and see if I can do some more damage that way. I want you to maintain fire on the key. And secondaries on uh, the Atami. Your secondaries on the Senjo. And Belknap start turning. Ow. I was expecting that the light cruisers would be more effective in taking down the destroyers at this point. It doesn't seem to be doing too much yet. There we go. Flooding. A few bulkheads. I hope the flooding's gonna slow her down. Because she's doing 33 knots, but with the recent changes, ships don't get that much of a target fast speed uh, debuff slash buff anymore, so they're easier to hit. Like this guy, it's only a minus 40% debuff, whereas it, it used to be pretty common to see a minus 80%. Because ships were just that fast and they got that much of a debuff, or you got that much of a debuff when trying to hit them. Now you lost your smoke screen. So not a light cruiser should have easy pickings. They have a lot of oh, there goes the Herndon. <laughs> I never got the Dickerson out of her turn. <laughs> yeah, Herndon. Got hit by 8 inch. I thought battleships were scary before. Oh no, they're a lot more scary now. Next target, Yamakaze. She's already taken hits. Oakland's not doing that well either. Because her small 2.7 inches of belt armor are not enough to sustain hits from the key. Wait. Where's Florida? Oh, here's Florida. I'm seeing torpedoes in the water. Source Yamakaze, target battleship. Assumed Florida, hard starboard. We're still messing up transports left and right. There goes Senjo. That was over there. Belknap is trying to avoid. Although, I'd say they could have perfectly maneuvered to the starboard flank of the sinking Senjo. But Tommy's down. Let's see if I can hit the Shishima. Ooh, Oakland's not going to do very well. Ammo detonation on Yamakaze. She starts to flood in four compartments. Wait, Detroit? Why are you not shooting? There we go. Yamakaze's down. Next target, Kaya. Torpedoes on key if you can. Flash fire on Oakland. She ditches one of her stern turrets. Involuntarily, I might add. Kaya already taking serious damage. Just look at how quickly this log fills up. That's all the two inch guns that we're seeing. It's gonna be even more difficult for me to keep up with the logs now. Belknap, what are you doing? 
Kaya's down. Where's Florida? Florida avoided the torpedoes. Oh, crap. There's another full salvo coming in from the Shiranui. And I don't know if I can avoid those. Detroit. Detroit just sent torpedoes against the incoming key. Flash fire again on the Oakland. This time it's one of her bow turrets which is taken off. Glad that those six inch guns don't detonate with too much force. Because <clears throat> they could have been seriously deadly. Honolulu also just torpedoed the key. Flash fire on the Shiranui. Shiranui's down. What a mess, this battle. I don't think I've ever seen ships go down this fast. Torpedoed. That's really bad news. With few bulkheads, this ship is going to start flooding very quickly. I'm hoping that the torpedoes against the key are going to prove to be deadly. Although they have maximum bulkheads. Honolulu, Oakland and Detroit and Trenton are doing what they can against the key. Key's flooding. Three compartments have been struck on the bow. Another flash fire on the already sinking Shianui. Sorry, Shiranui. And one on the key. What's with the flash fires today? More torpedoes turning into the key. They're still working on controlling that flooding, but it's not going well for them. One hit. Two. Three, four, five, six. He is taking serious beating here, but it's a big ship. Flooding might take a while. And Honolulu, unfortunately, does not have time for that. Because those 8-inch guns, as we have seen, can be exceptionally effective against light cruisers. Florida sinks to heavy flooding. Yeah, that was expected. A few bulkheads on a battleship? You're asking for it. Oh, they just... Really? I swear that these Japanese ships started out with three bow turrets. Like that. One, two, three. One on the stern. Well, not the key. <laughs> the key is down to just one turret on the stern. All bow turrets have been cleanly blown off by flash fires. How, though? Barbette 4. Krupp 3 armor. Increased ammo and super heavy shells. And... Increased ammo to torpedoes. Yeah, all of those factors don't really help. So the key is a lot less dangerous right now. That could be helpful. Fire and flooding on another transport. There goes Tochi. Flash fire on Honolulu again. The amount of flash fires I'm getting is oh ow. It's ridiculous at this point. And not just on my ships, but on both teams. Honolulu will sink. Maximum bulkheads didn't qu oh ow. That was the Honolulu, the Trenton, and the David R. Ray very quickly after each other, leaving just the light cruiser Detroit functional and the Oakland barely. We are not done with this fight yet. The Belknap's really gonna have to pull through on this one. I want you to target the key first, and the secondary still on that transport. I'm hoping that the Detroit can survive for long enough to do another torpedo run. Preferably against Mikado. Or sorry, Mikaho. Or Mikado. So, place your bets. Who's gonna get flash fire next? Oh, don't 
don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Land those torps, port side preferably. Unless the port launcher already fired. Maximum port turn. Dickerson's dead. Detroit's dead. Jesus, that was fast. Can we pen the key? We can. So I have no ships left but the Oakland and one battleship. Everything else has died. Which one first? They're both so low health. This one's broadside. There goes Oakland. Target the Mikaho. Belknap swinging her 18 inch gun. Singular to starboard because she only has one left. Oh, you know what? I'm going to try and ram. I've tried to ram a transport with a battleship in my patch notes video, but I haven't tried T-Bone ramming a battleship with another battleship. I'm 51,000, you're 85,000. I'm very much considering this now to be a scenario where I test out a lot of the new game mechanics, such as the secondary guns, which are exceptionally lethal to smaller ships, but also ramming. Belknap's armor is proving very useful at this point. You have to turn sharper than that, buddy. Come on. It's not quite going to be a T-bone ram, I think. Another fire and flooding. Flooding on the Belknap. Right through the bow. Steady course. Ship's trying to avoid, but that's not going to happen. This is hurting... 180... 145. It's hurting me, then it's hurting them. But I don't need to ram her too much more to sink her. There we go. Oh. Whoa. I'm... What? Right. I just either sailed across that ship or through her. I think the key's gonna sink me. Yep, I still took damage from ramming the sinking Mikaho. Interesting mechanic. I still took damage from that. Yep, there goes the bell nap. That leaves only a very damaged Japanese battleship alive, but I sunk everything else. So I'd say in this case, it's a victory for the US. Now, a lot of um, pretty severe changes that are going to impact quite a lot of the things that you um, will probably see in future videos. Let me know what your thoughts are on how deadly those secondaries have become, because these are no joke at this point. Looking forward to seeing how you guys enjoy these changes and again for the entirety of the video where I have a discussion slash review of the changes, have a look at the link down below in the description and that's where you can find it. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the battle and I'll catch you guys soon for another video.